Welcome to Tough Questions, where we address the most challenging issues of a real and a relative Christian faith. If you're joining us on Facebook Live or our YouTube channel, Instagram, or maybe the Tough Questions podcast, again, I want to say thanks for dialing in. Now let's get into our subject for this episode. You know, the world can easily bring us to the point of despair and hopelessness. But it really doesn't have to be that way. You know, there's always bad news circling around us, it seems like. It's easy to see, you know, situations that uh, leave us in this idea and this this complacency and uncertainty about what's going to happen. People die. There's jobs that seem to be vanishing. We read about the economy that's struggling you know, I like to read my uh, news with my phone every morning when I'm drinking my first cup of coffee. And, you know, you read about the nation being divided and it's easy for it to to be unsettling and to make you anxious and, and to wonder whether or not things are ever really going to get back to some sense of normalcy. So the question remains, how does this affect our lives? How does it affect our daily life? I was talking with a mom the other day and she said, you know, she said, if my kids are in this house with me one more day, I think I'm going to lose it. Yeah, that can get to be kind of a struggle. It can get to be kind of, you know, uh, just driving you to the edge almost. You know, we got to worry about social distancing and washing your hands and staying six feet apart. And, you know, I'm going to wear a mask forever, it seems like. It's very hard in all of these things to stay positive, And it's hard to see what God is actually doing. And I want, I want to say something that I think is extremely important. And that is that a negative outlook never leads you to a positive life. It just doesn't. You know, as a Christian, I'm encouraged in Scripture to keep my eyes fixed on Jesus, to keep my eyes fixed on the one that has uh, everything under control, the one that is our defender, the one that is our ever-present help in the world, the one that is our creator God. In the Scripture that Paul, one of the apostles, wrote, it reminds us of the fact that God has everything under control. It comes from the book of Romans, and I'm going to encourage you to take a look at that when you get a chance. It comes out of the book of Romans 8, and here it is on the screen for you. And we know that all things, in, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those that love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Well, Is that supposed to make me feel better? You know, that in all things, God, you know, works for the good. Does that mean that, you know, even though my cupboards are bare, I'm sure that something good will come out of the starvation, you know? How does that work? Well, we have to remember um, that God calls us in Scripture to be completely optimistic. We are to be optimistic in realizing that God is the one that is in control. And not to be foolish about it, not to deny that God is in control, but to be optimistic because we know the beginning, we know the middle, and we know the end. Scripture tells us where we're heading. We just have to remember what it says and we have to believe it, really. You know, optimism is confidence about what the future holds. It's this unwavering expectation that God is working every situation out for our future, for, for our good. And I remind you, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those that love him and who have been called according to his purpose. Even in the midst of the impossible boss, even in the midst of a financial setback, or the annoying in-laws, or the high school kids that want to get in trouble, or the painful breakup that you just went through, or maybe there's illness or 
or hardships of various different sorts that are that are traveling through your family right now. It's easy to get lost in all of that and to believe that things are, are just spinning out of control. But God's word tells us that every negative situation still holds the potential for good. But you got to believe him. You got to believe him. I think we need to think about what we think about. You know, how do you see the future in, in your life? Is it filled with anxiety or worry or fear? Is it filled with blessings? Is it filled with God, you know, escorting us through the various different phases of life? You know, how do you view your life? Or do you look at the situation around you and it's just simply horrible? It's just something that seems like it's just out of control and there's not a whole lot I can do it or do with it. You know, those things that occupy your mind, they also control your life. The life that you have, the life that you're living today is a direct reflection of the thoughts that are going through your mind. The quality of your life will never exceed the quality of the thoughts. Now, don't be pessimistic. Don't be like, you know, well, the economy's shot and my job is terrible and, and this virus is never going to stop and I'm going to have to wear a mask forever. Well, it's that critical mindset, that negative mindset that keeps us enslaved, you know, to this negativism that just is hovering all around us rather than us living in the joy that God calls us to live in. Pessimists feel like things are personal and that they're always going to be permanent. As a pessimist, someone would feel like it's their fault and that bad things are happening to me. And, and really, they, they end up with this, this victim attitude. And I think that's one of the most negative things that can happen to a Christian today is to develop this, this mindset that you're a victim. You're not a victim. You're not a victim at all. I mean, the world is tough. It's a fallen world. Life is hard. It's not fair. I mean, get over it. That's just kind of the way things are. But God has assured us that the end for those people that love him and serve him and believe in him, the end is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing if we just hold on to that. You know, being content in the world today being satisfied and, and being blessed and, and feeling and understanding those blessings and being optimistic, they aren't necessarily the state of affairs that we live in. They're more the state of your mind. You see, what consumes you and, and consumes your mind, what fills your mind is what controls your life. So what is it? Is it all the negativism that's in the world today? Is it the COVID? Is it the economy? Is it the, you know, the, the nation in turmoil? Is it racism and Black Lives Matter? Or what, what is it that's controlling your mind today that's dictating how you're going to live your life today? Or is it God? Is it the scriptures? Is it the peace of knowing that you are a believer in Christ and he has told us that nobody can snatch you out of God's hands. Nobody. Again, Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those that love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Those words were written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Rome that was going through all kinds of turmoil and struggles too. But I want you to know, the guy that wrote those words suffered immensely. Paul was imprisoned many different times. Five different times he endured. He endured this flogging, a flogging like what Jesus endured. Three different times Paul was beaten with rods and left for dead. Several times he was stoned in different cities. He was shipwrecked. He was abandoned basically in the ocean overnight 
wondering whether or not he's going to be he's going to drown or he's going to be eaten by a shark or something. The man was betrayed. He was beaten and left for dead on the side of a road. Paul understood what it meant to be overwhelmed with all of these negative things around him. And yet he still writes these words. As we know, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those that love him. So what about you? What's, what's hurting your heart today? What kind of things are you experiencing that are filling your heart with this anxiety and this sense of lostness? Is it job loss? Is it illness? Is it cancer? Is it relationships? You know, many times Christians ask, well, why does God allow us to go through these things? I'm going to tell you why. God allows us to go through these struggles as a way of producing the strength that tomorrow we need. Think about it. In your own life, the struggles that you have endured and you've gone through, haven't they made you a different person on the way on the other side? As you go through struggles and trials and you rely on God, hasn't it made you a a firm believer in who God is? Hasn't it built you up? You see, these struggles are what God uses many times in our own lives to, to turn us into more and more of the image of who Jesus is. It's, it's part of the goal. It's part of the plan. Because these struggles that I go through today are definitely creating the strength that I need tomorrow. And my tomorrow is filled with hope and filled with the future. It's filled with the blessings of God. It's filled with the protection of God and, and the glory of God because he tells us all of these things. And if we look back and survey our life, if, if you look back and at some of the things that have taken place and ask yourself the question, have those things created good in my life in some way? You know, I've been through a tremendous amount of health issues over the years, and, and I can tell you that in hindsight, looking back, going through those times made me a stronger Christian today. They, they have. They really have. Now, was it fun to go through or no, none of that. I don't, you know, I'm not a masochist. I don't, I don't enjoy pain and suffering and stuff. But, but I realize today that through those things, God was in control and God was creating in me you know, the strength that I need in order to be the person that I am today so that today I can go through life and not be afraid and not be overwhelmed by the struggles in life. Anybody here feel a little weak, discouraged, overwhelmed? Maybe you feel exhausted. You see, God, he, he will help you, but God doesn't help those who help themselves. Let me say that again. God does not help those that help themselves. If you look at this and say, okay, God, I got this. Okay, you're on your own. God helps those that rely on him and trust in him and love him. That's where the help comes from. As you go through these struggles and these trying times, God will be there to walk with you through it, to help you through this whole thing. Um, but you got to realize your need for him. And you got to accept who God is and accept him for all that he can do in our lives. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those that love him, who have been called according to his purpose. The Apostle Paul also wrote some other words. And, and as you're in the book of Romans chapter 8, uh, go down to verse 38 and start there. And this is what it says. This is the same guy, the same author. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What's he saying? He's saying, I don't care what's going on in your life. There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing 
that is going to separate you from the presence of God and the help of God and the love of God and the, the just everything about God, the way he's working in your life. There's absolutely nothing that can get in the way of that. Even though it seems like the world is just out of control sometimes and maybe our life is spinning recklessly toward the, the you know oblivion or whatever, but there's nothing that can get in the way of that God, child of God relationship. There's nothing that can get in the way or that can hinder God at all from working inside of each one of our lives. You know, no matter where I go, God is there. No matter what I do, God still loves me. No matter what happens to me, God is without a doubt for me. You and I need to live with this unwavering expectation that our loving God is working through the situations in our life and always working for our own individual and collective good. And it's in that I hope that we can all take great refuge. Remember, God loves you and God will never leave you and he will be with you forever and ever and ever. Our job is to love him with all that we are and let God do the rest. Thanks and God bless and I'll see you next week. Tough Questions is a teaching ministry of the Rosebush United Methodist Church. Join us on podcast at toughquestions.buzzsprout.com or you can go to Spotify or Apple Podcast and just search for Tough Questions Joseph Bevan. If you'd like to join us live, you can do that on Facebook Live Sunday mornings at 1130. Or if you want to check out our video archives, go to our YouTube channel at Rosebush United Methodist Church and just search as one word and you'll find us. Thanks and God bless.